Welcome, everybody. We are back with another tier list. This time we have all of the bounty hunters from the original Decipher run. There are no virtual cards on here because the list would just be like too big. It'd be like 40 <laughs> plus cards. So I think we have 23 cards or is it 30? Oh, right. I, I, think, I think it's 23. 23 cards. I couldn't remember. Uh, and we're going to rank these from S to D. We included a couple little criteria here. Um, you know, the situational and B. I know people say, well, it's situational, but I, I think we in general are, are trying to put these into a spectrum of if they're a good card or not. Um, so we have everything ordered down here from Premiere all the way to Reflections 3. Uh, so our first guy here, uh, actually, Steve, do you have anything to say yeah. at the top here about Bounty Hunters? I forgot some of these guys are Bounty I Hunters. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's some that I'd forgotten are Bounty Hunters. I mean, Bounty Hunters are just, they're just so fun. Uh, something about them, everybody loves the Bounty Hunters, maybe because they're all just like wild and fierce looking aliens. I don't know. But yeah, no, right. They all like are our fun costume department things. Yeah, yeah, they're great <laughs> props. Um, but anyway, I've always, ever since a little kid watching Star Wars, my favorite, my favorite characters are the Bounty Hunters. All right, so we're starting off with this guy from Premiere that a lot of people didn't know is a rare, but it's actually a pretty good card. Um, yeah, he's not bad. I also no one knows how to pronounce his name. I've always said Jasper, like the name Jasper. But when uh, you first said Jasper earlier, I was like, I I thought it was like Jas or something. Like I did not. But right when I was a kid, I first heard the card. I was like, it must be like the Jasper or something really weird. And then I was at a, a, my one of my first turns. Like I was like, it's just Jasper, like the name Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> that works. So as I've been saying it since then. Um, um, okay, where are we going to put him? Well, it's a little bit tricky because if you're looking at the, the entire span of Star Wars CCG, uh, I think he's somewhere between a B and a C. He's not. I mean, he's ability four draws destiny. Nothing wrong with that. Um, he he starts at a power one, but his power can usually is going to be higher than that. It usually, it's going to be like a two or a three or even a four. So he's kind of like baseline decent. So I guess I could go situational for him. He just yeah, I, I, he so, gets outclassed later on in the metas as we go forward. But certainly in the in, in premiere through like I don't know Cloud City, he's useful. Yeah, so he's power plus one for each uh, dark side icon present, plus two to nighttime conditions, immune to attrition under three. Yeah, I think that the idea is to park him at some place like the Cantina, where he's mm -hmm. going to be power three, ability four, right? And that's like. Pretty he gets easy. an additional boost of the cantina for being a uh, what like a, a bounty hunter or something. Yeah, I think he's an additional alien. boost there. So yeah, yeah. I, I think he's kind of a situational card. He's aged yeah. okay, you know. Yeah, it's not like sure. totally terrible. John um, Destiny, a little immunity. Um, yeah, so he's not bad. All right. Next we have uh Delta Burn Trevig. <laughs> um, um this is he's, an interesting card. I did not know he's a bounty. I forgot he's a bounty hunter until today. Um, he is, I think he's pretty bad myself. Uh, that ability one is hurting him. He doesn't really like do anything. Um, he kind of makes it so it's harder for your opponent to initiate battle, kind of. But I think he's pretty weak overall. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. There's like a little, oh no, I'm thinking of a different drug. Mm -hmm. Card that has mm. about the little gambling mechanic. Yeah, I actually yeah, it's not that's not figured out. He might be stone cold and playable. I, yeah, I, I'm I'm in that zone. I've I've never even thought to run him, even in like Premier only or Premier Hoth. Up to Premier he's, Hoth. So he's power two ability one. Yeah, one thing to remember with stuff, ability yeah. one, ability one aliens is that with Premier Obi Wan, Premier Obi Wan can make them uh, move away or be lost. Any dark side alien of ability one. So he's just like he's just iced in any battle with with Obi Wan, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think also I mean ability four is okay, but Stone Cold on play. Yeah, the, uh, the destiny of four. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think that's enough to save him. Uh, funny thing about him though is if you ever read the Tales from the Moss Eisley Cantina, which I think is also reflected in the lore, he is the um, the lover of Mio Moneth, the uh, the much better premier alien who like um, just you know goes through opponent's hands and destroys male uh, characters. So he like he comes to a really bad end in that story. Um, all right, let's go to Greedo. Sure. Yeah. Greedo's Greedo. power two ability one during your opponent's control phase may threaten one smuggler at, a, yeah. at the same site. Opponent may use force. Oh my, my uh, this just feels kind of like a janky. Not He's jank. He's a meme. Uh, he's bad. A, an ability of one half, like that's might as well be ability zero. Or a fourth, um, yeah. 
I'm sorry, forfeit. Yeah, it's forfeit is one half, so it might as well be zero. Yeah, the threatening mechanic is just not usable because you need to draw a destiny greater than we need to draw a destiny of six, right? Um, to, yeah. Because visibility is one. Yeah, so that's not that's not playable. It's just a meme. Yeah, he's he's bad. All right. Okay. Yeah, have... also, so he can be he can moved away with only one. Yeah. Moving on to Dan's Boren. Um. I'm so. I'm, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm I, I, he's a pilot, which is useful, right? Mm -hmm. Like the. Yeah. Um, a pilot who adds three to the power of anything he pilots. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. Adding three to anything he pilots, mm -hmm. weapon, you know, whatever. There's some sort of destiny draws for weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a passenger. He'll never use that. But yeah. I think being able to pilot for three in the early early formats is like pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a B on him too. I think he actually gets played a lot in your Premier to Hoth, even up to Premier to Cloud City, because he checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, and um, so Deep character, good destiny draw on his destiny three. So yeah, I'm 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 into him. Okay. Next we have Dengar. He's a power mm -hmm. two ability two adds two to anything he pilots. Power plus one for each opponent's character present. Mm -hmm. Kind of good. Mm -hmm. uh, while present may reduce Hans forfeit to zero. Here, that's also pretty mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Expensive. He costs four to come out. Three forfeit. What do we think of Dengar? Yeah. So for all these bounty hunters, one of the little things about them is their deploy to forfeit ratio is bad. Uh, mm -hmm. So deploy is expensive, the forfeit is low, and with the fact they're all mercenaries, they are you have to pay them a lot, and they're not gonna they're not loyal to you. So that's kind of the way that these guys work. Of course, your quarter of the gangster and a couple other things um, up their forfeits. Their forfeit is usually going to be higher than that when you're playing them. Anyway. Um, I think he is between a B and a C. The problem with Dengar and a lot of these, like, the, the main character bounty hunters is they also have ships and they have EPP versions that are mm -hmm. in competition with them. So you have to think about them, not in a vacuum, but with, uh, because, you, you know, any time you're playing past, um, you know, Premiere through Special Edition or onward, you have the other versions available to you. Well, depending on which, which meta exactly. But um, so... Yeah, I think he is. I think he is going to be a C, even though I did run him in Premiere for Cloud City, and it was kind of fun to reduce Hans forfeit to zero like once when I did that. Um, yeah, he does get more powerful usually because of his power that that power increase. So he can be a little bit more like a power, you know, four or so, depending on what your opponent's doing. So you know, he's not. Yeah, for, for every opponent's character, yeah, he can get beefy. I don't know. I'm like, I think I'm still C on him, but yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just also when comparing to the Dengar personality, like you probably just rather have Dengar blast her out, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's a choice you got to make if you're running this mm -hmm. Dengar. Also, right. ability one, I'm sorry, uh, forfeit uh, battle destiny one is kind of crappy. Yeah, yeah, I think all these guys are like that. Um, yeah, all the main character bounty hunters are gonna have, uh, I think, a destiny of one. All right, next we have Bosk. He's a power four ability two. Mm -hmm. Adds two to any pilots when piloting Hans Tooth. Adds one battle less not to able not to otherwise. Adds one attrition against opponents in battles at same site. That's mm -hmm. kind of okay. one. Yeah, just one. Yeah. While present may reduce Chewie's forfeit value to zero here. <laughs> that's funny because the Transosians, I think, hunt. Yeah, uh, Wookiees. Yeah. More wise. Yeah. I got to put him in the C as well, I think. I think that's right because he's in competition with Bosk and Houndstooth, which is one of the greatest starships that Darkseid has. Uh, that like auto, a giant ship that adds a destiny. Um, yeah, yeah. The only thing that people sometimes forget that's a selling point for Bosk is that you have that interrupt Restluck Wraith, which it's a lost interrupt that adds one destiny for bounty hunters defending a battle alone. Two if it's Boba Fett or Bosk, mm -hmm. so you can drop him and then he can often draw two destinies if you have a Breastlock Wraith. That's only going to be useful in sort of your earlier metas, like your premiere through Dagobah, premiere through Cloud City. Um, all right, moving on to Forlom. Mm -hmm. I think Forlom might be, this version of Forlom might be the worst of this bunch. Definitely. So is a two, three, deploy, forfeit, and then mm -hmm. power two, armor three, no ability. Total power is plus one for each alien droid pairs present. That's never right. going to come up. Once during each battle, a present with Zuckus may use one force to search any use pile and move one character there to loss. It's just too situational. It's like you have yeah. both him and Zuckus out. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. And then sometimes kind of you might hit uh, like a main or something to, but not a main on table, main in the use pile. Yeah, I think he's a D. Um, again, he's in competition with 
uh, one of the best bounty hunters uh, for them with concussion rifle. Um, and yeah, no, that C-3PO game text of power of like, alien droid pairs that never, never happens. And one even worse thing about him is that he, uh, he can be battled, which um, the can best droids, <laughs> right. The best droids can battle, but not be battled. So yeah, somehow he ends up by himself there. He can be in a world of hercs. He can be battled. So yeah, no. Yeah. All right, next up, we have our, our guy, Zuckus, uh, mm -hmm. power two, ability four. So he gets to drive his own destiny, four to deploy, yeah. three forfeit, adds two to the pilots, may move three as a react. It's kind of okay. Once during each battle, may use one force to cause one alien ability less than three at the same site, be forfeit zero for the remainder of turn. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of okay. Yeah. Um, immune to attrition less than three. So... I think he's the best of the bunch of I, these. He, I agree. He's the best of the Dagobah ones. I played him in Premier Cloud City, and I was pleasantly surprised by how good he was because he does get a destiny by himself as immunity. So those, those, so the baseline stats are are on point. But that moving for free as a react surprised a ton of people. Like, yeah, because you you put somebody who is not going to draw destiny by themselves and your opponent thinks, Oh, he, my opponent's made a mistake or something like this. And then he sets up to attack and then you just like slide Zuckus over for free. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um, React yeah. one of those things that like, it's so easy to forget that exists. And then all yeah. of a sudden you have Ewoks reacting to you or whatever, mm -hmm. ATSTs. And you're like, wait, what's going on? Right, 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 right. <laughs> and then you have this like combat and there's like, like there's like math in your mind, like where can they react to me and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, the, and then you know, the canceling the uh, ability less than three aliens uh, forfeit is kind of quest. It's basically the same thing that boss is gonna chewy, but only he can do it to every alien of ability less than three. So chewy and a bunch of other people. Yeah, most aliens, light side aliens, are less than three, right? Think chewy. Think um, mm -hmm. obviously like Milos, but like there's a lot of aliens that light side might run that are ability less than three. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a few that, that I think Chewie's the most important one. Chewie's the only one coming to mind, to be honest. But like, yeah, Kamelos is ability of four. I'm trying to think what else is there, but there's there's just some other random ones that show up in earlier metas. I feel like uh, Figure and Dan, I mean, maybe, but he's really yeah, the little gambling one or like the musician. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you know, no, no, no. There's like Elams, for instance. Like your opponents are run, you can run a lot of Elams um, with you know, those those guys that become like. Um, Power four when an Imperial is present, but they still build oh, yeah. one two. Uh, Palace Raiders. There's there, there's guys. Yeah, there's yeah. guys. All right, so I'm putting him in B situation. Yes, I like saying, it. Uh, he's yeah. obviously overshadowed quite a bit by the starship. That oh, is, yeah, the which is game. <laughs> like the best dark side starship of all time. Yeah, um, which we did not have any of those on here because it just no, no made things much. a little clouded. Right. Uh, all right, next we have IG88, the OG from Dagobah. Yeah. Also, I don't know how fun this set was to open as a kid mm -hmm. and get bounty hunters that all yes. had all of 10 seconds of screen time. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's like peak 90s bounty hunter. You got the, you know, the Tales of the Bounty Hunter book came out. They're popping up in like Shadows of the Empire and stuff. And yeah, the, the Kenner action figures, they're they're everywhere. All right. So he's a power four ability. Yeah. I'm sorry, not ability. Armor five. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Armor five is, is hard to crack. Yeah. Sometimes. Adds two to any pilots, may assassinate any character at same site hit by IG-88, victims immediately lost, may use two different weapons, may initiate mm -hmm. battle and be battled, immune to restraining bolt and purchase. Yeah, he's like deceptively good, but I think actually quite bad. Yeah, I think you're right. He's kind of expensive to get out, costs five. Uh, and like, on I like the fact that he can assassinate, which makes him like a like a Doctor Evazan in one with a. But the problem is like, what weapon are you going to put on him? Because his own weapons are bad. Um, the well, like I'm looking at them here, my binder. Pulse the, cannon, I the think. Pulse yeah. cannon is minus one to each. Uh, it Destiny is minus one greater than ability characters. Yeah, that's not what you want. That's bad. And then his neural inhibitor is um, does not make them hit it makes them power and forfeit equals zero so it, that means that it wouldn't be hit by him so it couldn't be immediately lost so yeah those are both bad weapons and you're not gonna put like a like imperial blaster rifle on him that's so there's not really any good weapon for him to use he can be battled he can't draw destiny a lot, a lot of problems with him Here's the problem with character weapons outside of lightsabers: is it's mm -hmm. just hard to get them 
out and they yes. tend to be clunky unless they yep. fire for free. The amount of times I've like had a weapon because I like weapons with the idea mm-hmm. of weapons, right? Yes, the of times I forgot it costs two force to fire this. I'm like, oh yep. crap, I don't have two force left. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the fun. only weapon I can think of that I've used that's not a blast, that's not a lightsaber recently, has been uh, Chewbacca's bowcaster from Endor because it does draw two destinies. Um, yeah. yeah, no. All right, moving on to special edition Boba Fett. So he's a power three, ability mm-hmm. two, armor five, adds two to power and one maneuver of anything he pilots. May deploy minus one as a react to same sites as gangster or smuggler. That's kind of nice. Uh, when firing weapons, any hit characters are forfeit equals zero. Mm-hmm. May fly, land speed three, and mm-hmm. less than three. He's just kind of mid, right? Yeah, he's pretty mid. The one thing people sometimes like to do with him is put Boba Fett's blaster rifle on him, which can fire repeatedly at, mm. I think, plus one to hit each time, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm my binder. Yeah, so he's um, in the uh, yeah. blaster rifle is force one to deploy on Boba Fett. May deploy as a react. May yep, target yep. character using two force, which is a bummer yep. for our destiny. And then you can fire it repeatedly for one for force. For one force each. So if you have a mountain of force... You can machine gun the table uh, there and make each one forfeit zero. Uh, I've never actually seen this happen, <laughs> to be honest. But <laughs> in theory, you could do it. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go see on this. But I'd like to see somebody use this effectively. So he, here's combo. the thing about force: the, the cost of force. It's like resource management stuff. Like if you were planning a beat down on your opponent, right, mm-hmm. and you have four or five cards in your hand and like six force. Are you going to save that force to maybe deploy, like, to fire this gun over and over again? And, <laughs> no. Or are you going to try to, like, put more cards down for the more, yeah, more well, characters? For right, like, you're probably going to try to use yeah. that force, those resources for more characters rather than, like, a beat down with a gun, right? That's yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to imagine, like, I'm living the dream where I've got him by himself. I'm holding Restlick Wraith in my hand. Uh, <laughs> um, i got a mountain of force. I'm like, pass. My opponent's like, I'm going to shape battle. I'm like, rest like Rafe, two destinies, and I machine gun the table, and I win the game. But uh, Yeah, right. It's, it's probably just, not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. All right, moving on to... Uh, but, you know, in 1997, when I opened this in the, in the first anthology, um, there's a videotape of my, me in, like, Christmas pajamas just going nuts, uh, pulling this card out, <laughs> which somewhere in a VHS box. Um, also, random thing, I think this is a different actor than the other Boba Fett. Yes, it's not... It's Yeah, it's not... Um, uh, uh, Jeremy Bullock. It's just so I, I, I have a copy of this signed by Jeremy Bullock. Just <laughs> yeah. random, people are like that's not even Jeremy Bullock there. It's just a different guy. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just whoops. he was down uh, to sign it, though, which is nice. All right, Boba Fett is up next. Which yeah. is, I'm just putting it here as a placeholder, but this might yeah. be the only card that I can think of that is named the exact same as the other one. Right? Usually, it's like Boba Fett. Right. Bounty, like, I just think both, both so. Lando Calrissian, Light and Dark are named the same, and they're the different cards. But that's, I think you're right. These are the only two that are named the same. Uh, so he's a ability, four, I'm sorry, power four, ability three, mm-hmm. armor five, adds yep. three AP pilots, which is nice. Mm-hmm. But piloting slave one, we can't say that anymore. <laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, <laughs> also adds two to maneuver and may draw mm-hmm. one metal disc if not able Otherwise, when horse and score, escorting a captive, cap is forfeit plus five, may fly, mm-hmm. major fishing less than three. I want this card to be good. Yeah, uh, it's just expensive to get out at five. Four is yeah. pretty good at six, but I just think there's other choices. That you're gonna. I'm make comfortable bumping that. him to a B though. Uh, if you are playing Premier through Cloud City, he is very, very good. Uh, mm. Just to ignore all the bounty stuff, which as uh, I think your friend Andy Talaga, our friend Andy Talaga, like went off on that recently in a video but yeah the bounty stuff never happens uh so they ignore that but you know the immune to attrition the power the, the armor is really hard to hit with a lightsaber even um wrestling rafe again for adding to destinies he's just he's just is pretty good i'd say mm. even if yeah so it's like a b minus but I, I i like him there and that picture is so cool so this is a great picture I, I like one of the best one of the best pictures in the game Okay, let's see when you start to get some A tier stuff yeah, here. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. Um, next I don't think have, I don't think it's Bane Malar though. I, I'm going to put Bane uh, Malar in a B tier because Bane okay. Malar is actually, I think, pretty good, <laughs> like in a limited format. Mm-hmm. So he's yeah. a power ability four. Mm-hmm. The big thing about him is at the start of a battle, you can use one force, 
to mind scan one opponent's non droid character mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. ability, add that character's power and game packs to his own for remainder of battle immune to attrition. Lesson three. Yes. This is a great target for Chewbacca. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, I, Mind That's scan right. Chewie and suddenly Bane Malar's power seven and people just didn't expect that because it's kind of obscure. That's right. That, that happened to me a couple of times. It's like weird stuff happened with Bane Malar. Ability four, mini nutrition lesson three. Again, those are those are good stats to have. So I'm comfortable with a B for Bane. Um, um, I'm not even, like, uh, I should longer. maybe even think of maybe I should even add a single copy of him to my to my Cordoval Gangster deck and see how he goes. Uh, I, I was playing with a dark deal deck, and like it was, it was just mm -hmm. like a little surprising. People didn't expect it. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, I and I'd forgotten that they they foiled him. I forgot about that. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, maybe we need a virtual Bane Malar. Just putting it out there. Maybe, um, maybe there is one. Right. I think I forgot about. Okay. Moving on to one of the scrubs <laughs> from Jabba's Palace. Uh, this was uh, the first rare I pulled from a Jabba's Palace pack, as I recall. Uh, not not an auspicious start. <laughs> Uh, is this Bolio or? It's Bolio. Bolio. No, he's Beto, like Speedo, but he's Beto. Um, all right. Let me grab his text here. No, he's, uh, he yeah. is a meme on top of a meme card. <laughs> um, so he is not great. No, no. Cause he can't, he, he doesn't even, I mean, he deploys, he's a deploy three forfeit two, unless you can play him over another Rodian. <laughs> I can't figure out how to, to to get his game text bigger here in live time. But. So it, it replaces any male Rodian for free. Rodian goes to used pile or deploys for three. While at audience chamber, all your other Rodians are power plus two. And whenever Greedo threatens a smuggler, you may add two to your destiny draw. So he makes Greedo's threatening ability from impossible to still unlikely to, to do anything. Um, and that's assuming you didn't play him over Greedo because he's like, I guess he's meant to replace Greedo. So no, this is a, <laughs> another mean card, I think. Um, yeah, most unfortunate. Moving on to this guy who I think is kind of cool. Um, so he's an ability three, power three, destiny three, deploy three. He's got three <laughs> eyes. That's his whole thing. Um, <laughs> his game text is something with like three in it. He's yeah. got fun. <laughs> It's like very dramatic. I'll, I'll allow him to be a C. I was I was thinking D, but that's okay. You can put him a C. He's uh, um he is playable, I guess. Uh, if you need another bounty hunter or a smuggler, he he fills in. I don't think that that, that three thing is actually going to happen very often because you can have three force to do it. You, if you just drew a bounty, you have three. You may use three force at three. That's it. So you can make a destiny number from a three to a six if you if all those things work out for you. One of my favorite Easter eggs here, actually, is you notice that the alien sig sig yep. symbol normally has two. His mm -hmm. has three. Yep, yeah, exactly. There's a few, <laughs> so, though, because like like Mew from the uh, from Miru, who's the Cyclops guy, he has a single line. Mm, and then oh, the, yeah, right. the Civ -Ziv -Ziv it, the light side bee-like alien from A New Hope, has many little alien eyes. <laughs> Um, I just like the game not taking itself too seriously. Yeah, I love that. There's no other game. There's no other company that has ever done that, as I, as far as I can tell. Okay, I think we're starting to get into S tier territory I here. I think you're right. All right, so Boba Fett is with blaster rifle. Yep, Boba with blaster. It's just an excellent card. Uh, yes, he is very good in many decks. Yeah, so. I, I'm I'm comfortable with him at S tier as well. Uh, yeah, because look, he's just like he kills stuff pretty easily. He adds extra destinies very easily. You know, Han or Jabba being in a site is um, pretty common occurrence in decks he's going to be in. I mean, he kind of goes in every deck, but like Han's pretty much shows up always, so he can add a destiny pretty easily. So yeah, it's good. He yeah, can't sure. fly. I, I wish he, I always wish he could fly. I always feel like he should be able to fly. Yeah, I just think they didn't have enough space. So power four, ability three, armor five, adds yeah. three and three pilots, so not terrible in space. Adds one battle that's with on or job of permanent weapon mm -hmm. blaster. If they're if they're hit and destiny, or I'm sorry, forfeit zero if destiny is plus one is more in defense value. So you can hit stuff, especially like littler guys, ability two, three, pretty easily. So he's just really solid. Um and I think is an auto include in many decks. I think they first yep. like make them a little bit better. Yep. All right. We now have IG eighty eight. He could yeah. be an S tier, but I 
Uh, I think he's S tier. I think he is. Um, so this is the IG-88 with Riot Gun, Power 4, Armor 5, mm -hmm. 5 to put out. He may initiate battle. Notably, he cannot be battle. Right, which is super relevant. That's, that's very important. Uh, his Riot Gun is uh, allows you to capture if mm -hmm. the Destiny's plus more in the defense value, add mm -hmm. one battle SP alone, or with your other Bounty Hunter, which is so good. Yes. Um, and the capturing mechanic is almost better than hitting sometimes. Definitely, yes. Uh, because he's so hard to kill at armor five. So when you capture a guy, they're immediately captured. So they're not like I've had this happen before where I was going to draw a destiny. I captured my little scrub mm -hmm. and I don't get a destiny anymore. And the battle just swings radically. Yes. Favor. Yeah. So. That's so, so with the capturing mechanic, you know, this is Star Wars CC strategy, but like, you always have the choice whether to seize them or to escape to the used pile. And it's like a tactical runtime decision because if you think you can survive the battle and either then get him away or survive their, you know, their counterattack next turn, maybe seizing is good because then they can't play their copy. Particularly if it's like a like an Obi Wan or somebody really good, you effectively remove that character from the game. Um, but if you think you might be over overrun or something this turn, next one, then you let him escape back to the used pile. But in any case, that character is off the table for the battle, not adding, you know, not drawing destiny, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think, I think his S tier, he's, he goes in like every one of my decks after he's released. I, I agree. And not um, being able to be battled is just so good. Like, so, you know, maybe, maybe everybody else in the battle dies and he's just sitting there like, well, you know, you, you cannot attack me next turn. So I'll just sit here with your guy. Uh, the next one, I think, might be the best of all of these. That's mm -hmm. our default. Uh, we have Forlom with Concussion yes. Rifle. Yeah. He still sees a lot of play, both the virtual version and the normal version in yeah. the, the modern. The meta. Open, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Power 2, Armor 3, adds one Battle Destiny with Jabba or Zuckus. That's fine. The big thing is Torment Weapon is Forlom Concussion Rifle. May target character for free. Target may not use a game text for remainder of the turn. Oh, yeah. That is so good at canceling out permanent weapons. You, you target like a whatever mm -hmm. loop with lightsaber, yep. and you know the way battles work is you, mm -hmm. if you initiate, you get the first weapons phase. Yep. So you can use that to cancel Luke's game text. He no longer has immunity to attrition, or uh, if it was an EPP, he doesn't. So yep. uh, he doesn't have the weapon anymore. Against Ben Kenobi and Prophet, you break that um, combo where he is reviving people every turn. So yes. you break that cycle. Um, yeah. And then let's not forget he adds a destiny of Zuckus, including Zuckus and Mist Hunter. So if you don't if you don't think you need him on the ground, drop him in the passenger seat of Zuckus and Mist Hunter, which still lets him draw destiny. Um, and you're drawing two destinies with your Zuckus and Mist Hunter. And probably suppressing your opponents. So that's amazing. One like thing I'm I, I'm always convinced I feel like sometimes the language of the cards because it doesn't say he may battle and be battled, but like we, we know he can battle and be battled. I'm not quite he sure cannot why. he cannot initiate battle on his own or be battled. So oh, unlike okay. IG eight with gun, um so maybe by the way, droids by in general cannot initiate battle uh by themselves. Battle droids are different than battle with icon. Uh, but That's right. uh, IG-88 can initiate, IG with gun can initiate battle, but not be battled. He can neither initiate battle nor be battled. So if everybody else dies, he just sits there and um, hangs out till you get somebody else present. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Sorry. And I just, uh, I realized I have my four long minifigure just sitting on my desk coincidentally. <laughs> just kind of a random, um, hard to find minifigure. He came in a, like a battle pack I got once. Um, okay. We have Yodo cast up next. Mm, uh, yeah. Love him. I think he's pretty. So he's ability th a power three, ability three. Mm -hmm. One battle opponent draws more than one battle destiny. May cancel one. Mm -hmm. nice. mm -hmm. one return may, when firing <laughs> blaster or rifle. May target for free and add two to total weapon destiny. May be targeted by hidden weapons. Very nice. Very may nice. Fly. Hidden weapons is actually very good. Oh, so um, good. Yeah. I it's so good. Think about putting him in A. Oh, I like him in A. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so he's better than all of the. He's better than the first two Boba Fetts, <laughs> even though yeah. he's imitation of Boba Fett. Um, so yeah, I think he's like pretty pretty good. Our first A tier. So uh, the only thing is a, a little nitpick, but like he, uh, 
I don't know how he got onto the, onto the Death Star too. There, it looks like he's hanging out in the Emperor's throne room. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, this is where they had like the extra set to do the shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but re read Hidden Weapons. So that card is is super cool. Um, yeah, Hidden Weapons is a Boba Fett or character with Mandalorian armor is present during the weapons phase of a battle. Target one of her opponent's character, draw destiny, and does a bunch of stuff. If you get mm -hmm. uh, basically, you want to get two to three immediately captured, four to five targets hit. Yep. So it just it's a use interrupt. It's easy to do. You can use Joe yeah. for it. It's nice. Um, so pretty good card overall. Mm -hmm. Next we have Bosk with Mortar Gun. Um, yeah, this guy is a little unfortunate, I feel like. Yeah, he's just not as good as his uh, other friends. <laughs> so he no. has two anything he pilots. Permanent weapons is Mortar Gun. They fire for free. But... Draw Destiny, add or subtract. If at the same site, it's bounty, worthless. Choose one yeah. character with that Destiny number to be captured. With That's that so destiny annoying. number to be captured. That's just, it's weird and clunky. It just yeah, whiffs there's, so often. There's also, this is a funny image. <laughs> this is one they did CGI, but it wasn't yeah, it's like not, It very does not look good. He's like holding the gun very strangely. No, you, I mean, you, I guess you want to draw one with that, right? So you can capture the big mains, but it does. Yeah, I, just, I've never made this work. It always just whiffs. And you just, again, it's like you want him on, you want the Starship version. So, yeah. Yeah, he might even be D. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll move to D. Um, all right, next we have Dangar with... Uh, put, him, put him back on C. He's like, he, uh, he is, he's got Russell Grave going for him. All right. We'll he's, not, he's, not, he's not as bad as those of people on D. <laughs> all right, we have Dangar with Blaster Carbine. Yeah. He's a power three ability two, adds two AMU pilots. Current weapon is his Blaster Carbine. You may mm -hmm. fire for free, plus one... It, uh, he gets a plus one if it's so Destiny's plus one over defense value. Maybe right. fired twice per battle. That yes, is so key. good. Yeah, um, I'm gonna put Dengar either A or S. He's not oh no, good. I don't think he's S. No, I think I think A or B. But I'll, I'll, I'm okay with A. Um, there are a couple of slight problems with him. One of which is his ability of two. Um, mm -hmm. So he shows up at the same time, r r roughly on the same time that Master Luke shows up. Uh, I know this is it, it, Master Luke was only played in the Prophet matchup, but uh, maybe this is because I, I got like beat down by Prophet a couple days ago. But uh, Master Luke can bounce him back to people's hands very quickly because of his ability too. So I thought I was like living large, going to take down a couple people, but like he immediately got bounced because all you have to do is drop above a two and he goes back to your opponent's hand. Um, but you know, you know the, the the two the two attacks is quite good for him. So I'm okay with A. Uh, using, the one other thing to think about is his the version of Dengar in ship is pretty solid too. So sometimes um, he gets outcompeted by Dengar and Punishing One, which can um, reduce Dengar and Punishing One turns off um, Starship's immunity to, attrici to attrition. Um, I, I know we're referencing these cards. We don't have the list. It just was too yeah. cumbersome to have all yeah. of these cards. Star we can even do one with Starships later. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, a, is, a is okay for him. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Now we have Snuva, who oh, yeah. I really like Snuva. Um, I've run into a couple of decks. So a, build, a power six, ability two, armor four, mm -hmm. deploys minus three to the same side of any smuggler or bounty. Yep. Any smuggler, right? Yep. So that yep. is including Han, right? Or sure. you know, yeah. Lando. During yep. your deploy phase, a Vibro Axe may deploy for free on Snuva from reserve deck. That rocks. When Snuva excludes a target with Vibro Axe, he may capture instead. So it's kind of a nice combo. I think Vibro Axe, does it also give him a bonus? I can't remember if it gives him also a... It adds one of power. Right? Yeah, so, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, I, it's nice. So he's a power... I'm going to snarkily I, say that Snuva is the best version of Chewbacca in the game other than Chewie Enraged. Yeah, probably. <laughs> he's, he's like better than all the Chewbacca's. Uh, yeah, he's, he's except for Chewie Enraged. Yeah, no, he's, he's an A. He's, he's really good. <laughs> And like that makes that Vibrax um, good. Um, he's basically like a like a quasi EPP kind of like Mara Jade is because you almost always get to pull his weapon out. Yeah, so Vibrax text, it's usually three to deploy on an alien warrior, but it's three with Snuva, mm -hmm. adds one to power, so he's now power seven, may target mm -hmm. a character to one force. Both players draw destiny, target immediately excluded, or Snuva can capture him. If warrior's power, which is gonna be seven, plus your destiny is greater than the target's power plus destiny. So you're just starting off with a winning hand and being yeah. power seven. 
right? And then, yeah. you know, it's going to be an uphill battle for your opponent to, like, really get yeah. over that. So I guess the same thing I said about Master Luke being able to bounce him fairly easily uh, applies here. And then I guess the, the axe would... Uh, Actually, where does the axe go if you if you get bounced a hand? Use pile, I, would guess. I think I think use pile is the answer. Yeah, um, so yeah, be wary there. But yeah, he's an A. He's good. He's really good. All right, we're down to our last two. This is where people might say, like, wait, this card exists <laughs> because um, no one wants to play uh, Beyond Reflections Two online. All right, so we have uh, Morris saying this is the AI version, which got yep. turned into a really good card. Actually, yes, one yes. of the AI versions, the really good card, but an EPP, I think, right. Uh, yeah, so she's a power four ability four, not bad. Deploy four, four for three. May use any stolen lightsaber once per turn. May steal a lightsaber from opponent's character just lost mm. or present. That's super situational. Uh, immune to attrition less than three, less than five when armed with a lightsaber. She's remember she she can also she can also steal you the old fashioned way using um, weapon levitation too because she has ability four. So you can oh, yeah. you know, weapon weapon levitation. Um, Anakin's lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber, whatever, right off of them and use them that turn. Yeah, that's so true. That's, that's pretty cool. I, I actually think she's an A. Oh, um, interesting. I've never run her in a deck because it's just such a random format. It includes yeah, that. I guess it's unclear what you'd run her in, I suppose. Um, well, I guess you could do a Court of Vile Gangster build um, in like Cypher cards only or something. But yeah, I think she's cool. It's just that people don't really have a chance to play her very much. She's not super busted or anything. She's pretty balanced. Um, I, I think one of the, the issues with the format, once you start getting into Aura Sing territory, is like everyone mm -hmm. is pod racing. Unless you have pod racing banned, That's right, it's right. just hard to think about any other card in that era. As right, right, right. <laughs> because it's just like... You got Darth Maul running around too and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it just it gets a little goofy with what card she's competing against. Mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. brings us to our last card, which is Boba Fett Bounty Hunter. <laughs> such a beast of a card. Power seven, ability three, armor five, adds three to anything he pilots, adds one battle destiny hit with your alien or imperial, or two battle destiny with your bounty hunter or Vader. Like you could have like Boba with crappy bounty hunter, yep. you get, or you're gonna get three battle destiny. <laughs> yeah. uh, immune to addition less than five, end of turn, use two or lose two, or he goes to the lost pile. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was thinking with this guy, it's like I don't know if you did this when you were a kid, but um, maybe in like the back of the class of your notepad, you're like making up fake Star Wars cards, and like they're all, they're ridiculously broken and busted because of, you know you're a kid. That's kind of like what this card is. It's just like he does like three battle destinies, and he's like he's so good. He's power seven, <laughs> but somehow it became a real card. Yeah, there's just like so many things wrong. Like the the inclusion of including inclusion of maintenance as a new mm -hmm. like. Thing for you to keep track of also is another part of this cognitive load that <laughs> yeah. makes this game really challenging. So you're keeping yeah. track of so much stuff at the end of your turn. And uh, it, it just, this card is broken. Uh, I think they try to balance it by adding a maintenance, yeah. but it is incredibly good. You can go out, basically draw three battle destiny with Vader and right. just absolutely you can pull Vader via Blizzard 4 and do all sorts right, of like right, insane right. stuff. I mean, I think that they they lifted the maintenance mechanic from Magic, which was upkeep a couple years before that. But the, there's just fundamental differences between the games, between creatures and Magic, which are typically quite fragile and don't last for very many turns, and main characters in this game, which might never leave the table for the whole game. If, if they're, It just is not significant enough to balance the, the huge power creep of this card. So, yeah, it's a bad card. And one of the... This is like... This and Blizzard 4... Almost, I think, pretty much single-handedly make people not want to play Decipher Cards only. <laughs> well, I guess there's like Senate and Pod Racing too, but like the, 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 this goes a long way to making people hate Decipher Cards only format. Yeah. Uh, power creep is real. Game designers now in the modern era should keep that in mind that it, it <laughs> can just absolutely break games. And um, yeah. So this is our final list. I'm going to yeah. do some generic bases so people can take a look at this. This is where everyone ranks. Um, I think I feel pretty good about this list. Me too. I, I like this list. I hopefully we didn't miss any of. I, I, I did a couple. I you know I filtered in GAMP. Hopefully I found them all. But uh, yeah, I think this is everybody. If you add in virtual cards, you're going to add in probably yeah. double the amount here, and we were sitting at like a two-hour video instead. So, <laughs> um, 
Any final thoughts here, Steve? No, it's, it's this is fun. Um, play Court of the Vile Gangster or, uh, you know, any of the other objectives that are good with bounty hunters and, and, and have fun. Yeah. Uh, my kind of scum is fun with bounty hunters. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, well, that's all the time we have. If you guys have recommendations or suggestions for future videos, we're happy to do those. Thanks for hanging out, everybody, and we'll catch you later.